how precious is the name of Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my way out. He's my way in. And he's my way through. Amen. I love calling upon the name of Jesus. Eternal God, our Father, we're grateful and we're thankful again for this blessed opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. Thank you for the word that you've given and thank you, God, for how we will receive it and thank you for what it's going to do in our lives. Father, we pray for the forgiveness of sins, the cleansing from unrighteousness, and we pray again that you would use us to glorify you, edify your people, O oh God, all of you and none of us. We pray that you would speak for us, speak to us, and speak through us. This we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Go with us today to the gospel as recorded by St. Luke. Go to the 24th chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 8. And we're going to be reading from the contemporary English version. Amen? The gospel as recorded by St. Luke. <coughs> the 24th chapter verses 1 through 8 from the contemporary English version. God has given us a resurrection sermon on today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once you find it, say amen. Amen. The gospel as recorded by St. Luke the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 8 from the Contemporary English Version. Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb carrying the spices that they had prepared. When they found the stone rolled away from the entrance, they went in. But they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus, and they did not know what to think. Suddenly, two men in shining white clothes stood beside them. The women were afraid and bowed to the ground. But the men said, Why are you looking in the place of the dead for someone who is alive? Jesus isn't here. He has been raised from death. Remember that while he was still in Galilee, he told you, the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners who will nail him to the cross. But three days later, he will rise to life. Then they remembered what Jesus had said. Amen? I want to talk to you today from a subject that I've spoken to you before, uh, the power to stand again. The power to stand again. And I don't know why he gave me this message today to do again. It may be someone here who's down for the count. And they don't feel as though that they can stand. And they don't feel as though that they can go on. But I want you to know that today's message is just for you. I want you to know that you have the power to stand again. Our message today gives Luke's account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, we know, is the son of the living God, and he's also many of our Lord and Savior. The word resurrection in the Greek is, uh, it means to stand up again. That's what resurrection means, to stand up again. It means to rise as opposed to falling. And it's a rising of the body from the grave. So resurrection means that I'm down, but now I'm up again. Right. Amen? 
Amen. Adjust me just a little bit. Turn me down just a little bit. It means to stand up again. Amen. That's good right there. Now, the resurrection is possibly one of the most important events in the redemption process. I say this because Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, he says, And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, and you're still in your sins. Amen? See, it's not enough just to know he died. But what's really important is that he got up. Amen? Because if he didn't get up, we're still all in our sins. Amen. Paul tells us in the book of Romans that the resurrection of Christ is what justifies the believer. I want to put a pen right there. I've got something I failed to do. So before we give benediction, say, Pastor, don't forget to do what you failed to do. Somebody remind me of that? All right, let's go on. Take the pen out. Amen. Paul tells us in the book of Romans that the resurrection of Christ is what justifies the believer. Justification means that God treats us just as if we haven't done anything wrong. It means that God reckoned us right. He judged us right, reckoned us right. Reckon comes from the word reconciliation. You have an accountant in here. You know how you get your books together. They said this came in, and now you take the figures and see if it reconciled. So that's what Christ did. See, God reckoned us right. He says that the wages of sin is death. Christ died for our sins. So he says, let me see. Since he died for the sins of the people, I'm going to now reckon them right. I'm going to say the debt is paid. I'm going to say it's a zero balance on both sides. I'm going to wipe the slate clean. If Christ had not resurrected, he says that Romans 4, uh, 25 says, God gave Jesus to die for our sins. And he raised him to life. Why? So that we would be made acceptable to God. You know about that corner stove. Mama had an account there. Amen. And you kept getting stuff on it. Amen. Didn't even tell the man mama was dead. You just kept charging on it. You kept charging on it. Wasn't in his business. Amen. And, and, and mama used to make it right every month. Mama used to have it figured up. Go up there and give Mr. Stokekeeper $14.58. I'm giving you $15. Bring me so much change back. Or she may be generous and say, you can keep the change for going. That's what Christ did. Amen. See, you couldn't come facing the storekeeper and you owe him credit. Christ made it right so that we could face God. Hallelujah. Without being ashamed and without having sin on our account. Amen. The resurrection is important. Peter said that the resurrection brought us again to a living hope. Amen. First Peter 1 and 3 says, praise God. He said, God is so good. And by raising Jesus from death, he has given us new life and a hope that lives on. Amen. That's our hope. We know we're going to see God one day. Why? Because Jesus died. And not just because he died, but because he stood again. He was resurrected. Amen? See, resurrection power is available to all of us and should be experienced in each of our lives. Every believer ought to be like Paul who desired to know and experience resurrection power. Amen? You ought to want to know how to get up when you're down. You ought to want to know what kept Christ going and why Christ wouldn't give up and what kept him from quitting and what got him up the third day. Look, look at Philippians 3, Paul and 10. So Paul says, all I want to know, Christ. And he says, and the power that raised him to life. Paul said that I want to suffer and die as he did so that somehow I may be raised to life. Paul is saying, I really can't figure it out right now other than what God has said. But when I go through it and he gets me up, now I got a testimony. 
I got a story to tell. You understand? He said, all I know is that he died, and, and then three days later he got up again, but he said, I can't, I can't put the story in between it. But he says, what I want to know is how it happened. And he says that the easiest way for me to understand how it happened is for it to happen to me and God gets me up. Oh, I know you don't like that. That means you got to go through something. I understand. I understand. You say, well, no, don't worry, Pastor. I'll let him tell me when I get there. I don't need to go through it. Amen? The Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. Romans 8 and 11 says, yet God raised Jesus to life. He says, God's spirit now lives in us, and he will raise us to life by his spirit. That's how it's going to happen, by his spirit. Amen? See, now the concept of resurrection is seen throughout the scriptures. The children of Israel were captives in Egypt, and God raised Moses up to deliver and to resurrect them from a horrible condition. You remember when he said that the cry of the children of Israel has come up to me there in Exodus. He says, I've seen them, the oppression which the Egyptians oppressed them. He says, come now, Moses. I'm going to send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Amen? After the death of Joshua and the leaders of his day, the children of Israel, they forgot the commandments of God. They began to do what was right in their own eyes. God allowed them to go into captivity, but he raised them up, uh, raised them up judges who would judge them in the right direction, and then they could be resurrected from their situation. Are you listening to me? Jesus himself even practiced the concept of resurrection during his earthly ministry. Matthew 8, 23 says that, he raised Jairus' daughter. Matthew 9, 23 to 25 says he raised his Jairus' daughter. It says when Jesus went into the home of the official, he saw the musicians and the crowd of mourners. He said, get out of here. This little girl isn't dead. She's just asleep. Then verse 25 says Jesus went in to the girl's bedside and he took her by the hand and he helped her up. That, that's, that's an illustration of the resurrection. Somebody in, here, <coughs> excuse me, somebody in here today need to ask Jesus to take me by the hand Amen. and get me out of this mess that I'm in. A Amen. Jesus also raised the widow's son there at Nain. You know, they were headed to the cemetery, but Jesus went over there in Luke the 7th chapter 14th verse. Jesus went over and he touched the stretcher on which the people were carrying the dead boy. They stopped and Jesus said, young man, get up. And the boy began to set up and speak. And that's what he's saying to somebody today. Get up! You don't have to be there with your head down. Get up! I know you've been through a lot, but you can get up. You've got the power to stand again. This message today is intended to encourage you and to let you know that we have the power to stand. It doesn't matter what you've been through. We have the power to get up from that situation. We have been equipped to come through storms. We've been equipped to endure persecutions. We've been equipped to stand up under trials and tribulations. And then when we come out, we can look the enemy right in the face and tell the enemy that I'm still here. Look at the enemy and let him know that what you meant for bad, God has turned it into my good. We're able to stand because of who Jesus is and what he has done. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I don't know what you're looking for to try to get you up, but Jesus said, I am the one who gets folk up. And Jesus said, not only will I get you up, but I'll give you life. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He said, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me, he says, you won't ever die. You may get down, but you won't die. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This text today gives us three reasons that are important to know and understand 
if we are to exercise our power to stand again. We have the power to stand again because of the prophecies spoken. I got to be able to just stand on his promise. I got to be able to just stand on his word before I can walk in new life. I got to be able to just do it because he said it. I got to do it because he says that's who I am and that's, that, that's who he created me to be. It doesn't matter what I feel like. I, I got to do it because he says I'm able to do it. Then I see here that persecution does not prevent the manifestation of prophecy. <laughs> It may not come right now, Frank, amen, and I may have to go through some things before I get there, but it cannot prevent me from getting there. And that's the hope that I walk in, and that's the hope that keeps me going even when I'm down. When I'm down, I'm telling myself that I got to get up so that I can go to the prophecy and the manifestation can be seen in my life. That's the hope that keeps me going. That's why I can tell you that I may be down, but I'm not going to stay down. Then we have the power to stand because of the promises of the Savior. Prophecies spoken in verses 6 and 7. The women went to the grave. You had Joanna and you had Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and there were other women. They had crucified Jesus and they buried Jesus in Joseph's new tomb. And they went to the grave looking for him so that they could complete uh, the embalming process. But when they got there, they found two men at the grave. And when they went in and found the stone rolled away, and they were so alarmed, in verse 6 it says that one of the men said, Jesus isn't here. He said, he's been raised from dead. Then he says, remember that he told you that. <laughs> he told you that while you were still in Galilee. This is what he told you in verse 7. He said, the Son of Man would be handed over to sinners who would nail him to a cross. But three days later, he'll be raised to life. And the Bible said they remembered what Jesus had said. In essence, they remembered the prophecy that had been spoken. Are you listening to me? See, a prophecy is nothing more been a word spoken over your life that you allow God to bring in through your, into your life through your life. A prophecy, deacon, is nothing more than God telling me that you are a preacher and you're going to preach one day. And when I get over here in life, I say, well, okay, God, preach through me. And then I get over here, the manifestation of what God said over there now is working through me. When he said it over here, I was in the club doing the Watusi. When he said it over here, I was listening to the emotions and I was listening to confunction and I was listening to Isaac Hayes and I was listening to Marvin Gaye when he said it over here. And in between me going to the clubs and in church every now and then and riding in my car, I gave up to the prophecy. And now over here, what God said over there, when it didn't look like it was going to come to pass, has manifested through my life. And it didn't happen because I wanted it to, but it happened because God spoke it in my life and I received what he spoke even when I didn't feel like I was could do it. Are y'all getting this? You sitting out there, you got the power to do something. See, true prophecies, they, they come from God. And they're spoken by God. And they got to accomplish their purpose. He told Abram, he said, Abram, 
I want you to leave your country, leave your family, leave your relatives, go to a land I'm going to show you. He says, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make your descendants a great nation and you're going to become famous and bless another. But then Abram partly did it, but then he told Isaiah, he says, a virgin is going to be pregnant. She's going to have a son and we're going to call him Emmanuel. Are you listening to me? See, God was speaking this in Genesis. It wasn't Abram's job to make us a great nation. Only Jesus could make us a great nation. But Abram had to accept the fact that he was going to be the father of many nations. Then Mary had to be involved. See, Jesus' life was preordained. He knew beforehand that who he was and what he came to do and he knew he had to go through some things, but he also knew what the end was going to be. <laughs> Verse 7 says, the son of man, he said, I'm going to have to be handed over to some sinners. They're going to nail me to the cross. But I want to tell y'all three days later, I'm going to get up again. So you don't have to worry about it. I know you may be a little frightened, and you're going to have to watch me go through some stuff, but I will get up again. Somebody need to say that in the spirit right now. They need to say, I will get up. I may be in left field right now. I may be on crack right now. I, I, I may be shacking right now. I may be living ungodly right now. But somebody need to tell the devil, I will. I'm not going to go out like this. I will. I'm going to stand up again. I'm going to be who mama said I ought to be. I'm going to be what my family said I could be. I'm going to stand up again. Woo! Hallelujah. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they may drink a little beer. They may smoke a little dope. They might do some ungodly things, but when they're old, they won't depart from it. You just train it. Jesus had prophesied this over his life. Luke 9, 22, Jesus told his disciples, he said, the nation's leaders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, they're going to make the Son of Man suffer. He said, they're going to reject me and kill me. But three days later, he says, I'm going to get up again. He told the 12 apostles in Luke 18, he took them aside and he said, everything that the prophets wrote about me, it's got to happen. He said, but he will be, I'm going to be handed over to the foreigners. They're going to make fun of me and they're going to mistreat me and they're going to spit on me and they will beat me and kill me. But three days later... He says, I'm going to get up again. So since prophecy has been spoken over our lives, we also have the power to stand. You've got to understand that we've been predestined. We've been given a destination before we were even born. We've been predestined to be conformed into the image of Christ. Therefore, God works all things together for good. You know what Paul said in Romans. He said, and we know that all things work together for good. Why? Because we love God and we have been called according to his purpose. You understand call. Do you understand call? Do you really understand call? You know, when you were having to pump water at home, and Brother Tate, you, you're a farmer. You understand that sometimes the cows have to have water, and your job is to slop the hogs, but mama and daddy, you understand, they'll let you go play with your friends for a while. But when it gets a little late, you hear mamas come at the back door, Fred, Fred, come home. And she was calling me home. For a purpose. Are you listening to me? I didn't have to wonder why she was calling me home. I knew it was time to pump water for the cows. I knew it was time to start slopping the hogs. And that's what I'm saying. He said, God has called us according to his purpose. 
Now, Brother Lil John, sometimes if you want to get a little stubborn, you'll act like you didn't hear her. But then she'd come to that door and say, your daddy will be here soon. Don't let me have to call you anymore. And when she gave you that warning, are you listening to me? So what I'm saying is God has called us. Can you hear him calling your name? He said he's called us into purpose. Verse 29, he says, for whom he foreknew, knew before I was in my mother's womb, knew when I was in the spiritual realm, knew when my great, 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 great granddaddy put a seed in his wife. He knew me then, for whom he foreknew. He also predestined. If I let you get here, I got a purpose for you. And he said, these he also called. You better get what I'm saying now. He foreknew me. Then he predestined me. Put me in the earth realm. Let me do my thing a while. But he already foreknew what he want me to do. So he predestined me to do it. And later on down the line, he called me. Oh, my Lord. And he called me huh, to be conformed to the image of God. He said, but those he predestined, he called. And those he called, he justified. Are you listening to me? I'm already justified. Christ has already done it. And those that he justified, guess what? He glorified. Can I stop right here? Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Right now, even when I can't do everything right, I'm already God's son. And it does not yet appear what I'm going to be. But when he comes, when he comes, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, I've got the power to stand again because of the prophecy spoken. But I have the power to stand again. Persecution does not prevent the manifestation of the prophet. Look in verse 7. He said, now the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners who don't care nothing about him. Don't you feel that way sometimes with some of the folk you're trying to help? Do you feel unappreciated sometimes? And do you feel like they really don't care? And they, they, they don't understand what's really going on. He said, you're going to be persecuted, and the minute you give them what you have to give them, it's not enough, and look like you could do more, and look like you're the church, and if that's all you can do, should have been able to keep that, and I thought y'all supposed to love folk around here, and you know, you ought to have the love of God in you, and Hey, amen. I've been down for three weeks and I ain't heard nothing from you and look like if you're the pastor, you ought to be. Are you listening to me? Look like if he was so holy and righteous, he ought to know this. And no, no, there's a dead cat on the line. And he said, the son of man. You'll catch up with him, Michelle. That's all right. He's going to be handed over to sinners. Many times we ask God to deliver us from people. But God will often use sinful people to deliver us. <laughs> if it wasn't for sinners and enemies, I wouldn't pray like I ought to pray. If it wasn't for sinners and enemies and folk talking about you, I couldn't love mean folk. Yeah, we want God to deliver us. But what he does, he used folk to do the same purpose. God will use people who are sinful to bring about persecution prior to the manifestation of the prophecy. The Son of Man, he says, will be 
hand it over to sinners, and they're going to nail him to the cross. He said, but three days later, I'm going to get up again. See, persecution will preclude the prophecy, but it will not prevent the manifestation of the prophecy. Jesus had to go through sinners just to get up three days later. Are you listening to me? See, persecution did not prevent the manifestation. Jesus told him in, in Mark 10, 29, he said, you can be sure that anyone who gives up his home, his brothers and his sisters, his mother or his father, or his children, a land for me and for my sake. He said, you're going to be rewarded. You don't have to worry about that. He said, they're going to be given a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, and children, and pieces of land, huh, though they've been mistreated. Huh, and in this world, huh, you're going to have a persecution. Huh, but the next world, huh, you're going to have eternal life. Huh. Paul put it like this. Huh, Paul said, we often suffer, huh, but we're never crushed. Huh. Are you listening to me? Huh, persecution huh, does not prevent the manifestation of prophecy. He said, we often suffer, huh, but we are not crushed. Huh. He said, when we don't know what to do, huh, we still don't give up. Huh. Yeah, he said, in times of trouble, huh, God is with us. Huh. And when we are knocked down, huh, Paul said we get up again. Huh. Yeah, I think I better close it because y'all kind of want to lose me here now. Huh. But I want to go to my last point. Huh. I want to tell you that we have huh, the power huh, to stand up again. Huh. I don't know about you, huh, but you need to believe what I'm telling you today. Huh. You have the power huh, because it's been prophesied huh, over your life. Huh. Yeah, huh. persecution huh, can't prevent the prophecy huh, coming to manifestation. Huh. But the last thing, huh, we got the prophecy huh, and the power huh, because of the promises huh, of our Savior. Huh. Look what he said. Huh. The Son of Man huh, will be handed over to sinners. Huh. They're going to nail me to the cross. Huh. But three days later, huh, I promise you, huh, I'm going to come back to life. Huh. Yeah, huh. yeah. Huh. See, Jesus, huh, he prophesied huh, that sinners huh, had to have their way. Huh. But sinners huh, would crucify him. Huh. But he promised huh, that he's going to get resurrected. Huh. I heard him say, Ha! <laughs> in John the second chapter huh, destroy this temple huh, but in three days huh, I'll build it again huh. the leaders replied huh, it took 46 years huh, to build this temple huh. what makes him think huh, he can rebuild it in three days huh. but Jesus huh, was talking about his body huh, when he huh, would be raised from death huh. yeah huh. Matthew 12 huh, some of the disciples and Pharisees and teachers of the law they asked Jesus to show me a sign but Jesus said the only sign that you're going to get is that of Jonah he was in the stomach of the big fish three days and three nights and the son of man will be in the heart of the earth three days Ha, and three nights ha, yeah ha, I heard him say in John 10 ha, no man ha, takes my life ha, I give it willingly ha, I have ha, the power ha, to get up ha, but if I give it up ha, I'm going to receive it back again ha, I heard him say again ha, if I ha, and I ha, be lifted up from the earth ha, I'll draw ha, all men ha, under me. Ha. Jesus, ha, he was delivered ha, into the hands ha, of sinful men, ha, but he kept his promise. Ha. Jesus, ha, he was betrayed ha, by Judas, ha, denied ha, by Peter, ha, and deserted ha, 
by the disciples, but he kept his promise. Jesus, he endured punishment. He endured pain. He endured persecution, but he kept his promise. Yeah, the Bible says very early on Sunday morning, the women, they went to the tomb. They were carrying spices, which they had prepared. And when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. They went in, but they didn't find Jesus. Sometimes we're looking for Jesus in the wrong places. Yeah, they didn't find his body. They didn't know what to think, but suddenly, suddenly, two men in shining white clothes stood by them. Won't God tell you what's going on? Won't God help your confusion? Won't God come to you when you need a word? Two men in shining white clothes. The women, they were afraid. They bowed to the ground. But the men said, why are you looking for the living in the place of the dead? Jesus, he's not here. He's risen just like he said. Jesus got up just like he said he would. He had the power to stand. Let me tell you something as I go to my seat. We also have the power to stand. It's been prophesied. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah, it's been prophesied. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them out of them all. We got, we got the power to stand. It's been prophesied. I heard him say, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm coming again to receive you under myself. Come here, Paul. I heard Paul say that with a loud command, with a shout, of the archangel and the blast of God's trumpet the Lord he will return and those who died in Christ we're going to get up we're going to get up bury me wherever you want to bury me but on that day I'm going to get up burn me up if you want to burn me up. But on that day, I'm going to get up. And then, I'm going to look at my hands. They're going to look new. I'm going to look at my feet. They are too. Yeah. 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 Jesus, he died. But he wouldn't stay dead. Really? Really? Third day morning. He got up, oh power, oh power, oh power, in his hand, somebody ought to tell the devil, I may be down, but I'm getting up, I got power, 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 Holy Ghost power, yeah, yeah. to stay down you got the power it's been prophesied you got the power what you've been through doesn't have the power to keep you down you got the power Jesus promised 
that we could do it. You just got to believe it. There's so many people in here today that's been down and some probably even wanted to give up. But thank God that God gave them another word. And they kept coming. They kept coming. They kept coming. And now they're standing up again. Folk had counted them out. Folk didn't want to see them do well. But they kept coming. They kept coming, and they kept coming. God brought them out. And that's what I'm trying to tell somebody today. The power is in you. You just got to want to do it so that you can ignite the power. But the power is in you. But the Holy Spirit can't do anything without your will. Now, this is what I want you to do. Say it under your breath. You don't have to say it aloud. So, Holy Spirit, help me to get out of this mess. I want to stand again. That's a good beginning. You understand, Holy Spirit, I've gotten myself in a terrible mess. It's beyond what I can handle. But help me to get out of this mess. I want to stand again. And if you do, I'll tell the world where I was, what you did, and they can see where I am right now. I'm not going to try to hide it. That's why I often tell you that I used to do a lot of terrible things.